Hello everyone, I'm Tristan44 and welcome to this let's play of Blades of Avernum. A lot of you have been asking me for this for, well, pretty much since at least Avernum 2 or Avernum Original. Because, well, this is part of the Avernum games in a way. <laughs> Um, and I've been putting it off for a couple reasons, mainly the scenario editor, and there's a lot of scenarios out there, as I mentioned in a vlog I posted. I'm going to do all of those, but first, there's a couple scenarios included with it that I'm going to start with. And, believe it or not, you make your own party in a way, in a way and take it through every scenario. You don't have to remake your party for every scenario, which is nice. And I already went through the process of actually making a party. It came with a small tutorial afterwards to basically teach you, okay, here's how you play, but I, I just skipped through that. I don't need to go through that. I mean, I don't need to show all that. We kind of already know everything, and there's not really any comedy or anything special. It's basically, hey, click here to, click here to move. Walk up to a door to move through it. Click this button to talk to a person. Walk into someone in order to smack them with your sword. Stuff like that. Anyway, I already made a party, so give me a moment and I'll load them up. And there they are. Pretty simple thing. I went with the soldier, lockpicker, cleric, and mage setup, as I normally do. And we've got Fox, the, the warrior, leader of the whole group. Sheik, the rogue, lockpicker. Uh, a bit of a fast talker, but able to take care of things. Bonnie, caring and loving and affectionate, and the healer of the group. And Draco, very passionate, but our mage. And, well, that's the group we've got. So, yes, now you have some adventure, yada, yada, yada. Okay, we've got four scenarios here. Valley of Dying Things, A Small Rebellion, The Zakazai Run, and Diplomacy with the Dead. I have only ever done Valley of the Dying Things, because if you only decide to download the demo, you can play Valley of the Dying Things, and only that one. I think you can probably do the other scenarios that people have created as well. I don't know, but that's basically it. So... I suppose you may as well start with the very first one. Hmm, apparently this one's rated teen. Interesting. Anyway, Valley of Dying Things. Everything in the valley is dying. The plants, the animals, the people. Disease is everywhere, and people are losing hope. Sounds fun. Let's begin. Adventurers at last. Your long years of exercise and study are done. You are on the road, vagabonds, travelers, looking for missions to complete, people to help, rewards to earn. Soon you will be heroes, if you have anything to say about it. Adventurers are free spirits. The Empire doesn't like independent people, but it tolerates them because they can take care of annoying, dangerous jobs that bureaucrats don't want to bother with. As you are inexperienced, you have trouble finding work at first. Then you see a weathered scrap of paper on the local jobs board advertising a special mission. The other mercenaries have been ignoring it. Not a good sign. Yet, money is running low. You're getting hungry. You sign up for the job. A highly relieved official is eager to give it to you, carefully ignoring your inexperience. Apparently, you are to go to Skylark Vale and investigate a minor plague or disaster or something. They aren't specific. Skylark Valley is remote, and the work is low priority. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sending you. It's not glamorous work, perhaps. Still, it's a job, no doubt the first of many. After a long hike and a lot of blisters, you arrive at Fort Talaris, an empire outpost on the lip of Skylark Vale. Your orders are to speak with Commander Terence, to send into the Vale to find out what the problem is and deal with it. You've just stayed the night in your room at the fort. You had a good night's sleep and a good meal. Now the sun is rising. Finally, it's time to go out and be heroes. There we go. And I apologize for that. There was like a brief, uh... <sighs> Briefly, things didn't work right. Alright, uh, should probably give these things to people. All food goes on Bonnie. We don't really need the candles, but I guess hold on to them. Actually, a lamp would be better. Alright, another candle. Some dried meat. 
And I think food... Yeah, you use up one unit of food every time you rest. Okay, so that's what we got there. You've got pants, you've got pants, you've got pants. Draco, why don't you have pants? Ugh. Anyway. You leave your quarters, keeping an eye open for Commander Terrence's office. As you leave, you find a note. Someone rolled it up and left it on the, door, on the floor by your door. It says, Help yourself to the supplies in the storeroom. Come see me when you're ready to get to work. T. When you arrive, Terrence's offices were pointed out to you. They're down the corridor to the south. Oh, there's the storeroom. So, ooh, we got a lot of gear here. Nice. All right, let's see. Shield, horse-studded armor, and bronze longsword. And a crude bow. Get that one, that one, and that one. One to four, one to three. Oh, the crude dagger can be sold, I guess. And we got a map. Okay. Let's get the equipment on. Alright. We've already got leather. Alright. So... We got nothing... Give that to you. And these things I guess you can sell. Alright, let's look at the map. We got Morales, Bin Blinlock, Sweet Grove, and Fort Talris. So we're down here. I guess we'll be exploring a bit. Oh, we got a couple other things around here. We got boots, yay. Crude arrows, yay. And lockpicks, yay. Uh, where are the boots? There's the boots. Sandals, I guess, we can sell. And we also have this here. Ah, more shields. Don't worry, I will be giving him a spear. Alright, now back to exploring through this place. Hello. You meet a young magician dressed in worn robes. He is probably a traveling mage, moving from town to town and helping to solve problems. However, you doubt he'll be moving on any time soon. He is clearly quite ill. He doesn't look like he wants to talk to you. He coughs and gasps slightly. <coughs> I'm a Vizo. <coughs> what do you want? Are you on a mission here? No, not anymore. I'm trying to flee the veil. What is it to you? You're fleeing the veil. Yes, I'm leaving. How can anyone stay? I'm here to help. I'm on a mission here. Well, of course you are. You're welcome to it. The reward, the fame. <laughs> I'm off. It's just too dangerous. And I had to leave things of great value behind as well. This clearly upsets him. What did you leave behind? He doesn't care to talk about it. His eyes start to tear up and he bows his head and turns away. What were you trying to do here? What do you think? The curse! I tried to help with the curse. I got involved, but nobody could help me. I tr could give me the help I needed. Nobody thought I could help, and I got involved. I... <sighs> Just go leave this place. You can't get anything here but disease. Don't even try. He stops talking, interrupted by a vicious hacking cough. Cough sounds pretty bad. He looks annoyed. His wheezes have a distinctly tubercular sound to them. Okay, then. We'll leave you be, then. Let's see. Quality gear storage. No entry. Eh, leave it alone for now. Tool storage. Emergency water supply. Keep clean. Hey, you know what? Let's see if we can pick it. We can! I mean, it's tools. Pants! Nope, oh, steal it. Thank you. Pants for you. Cloak. Also, I just realized I can give this poor leather armor to Draco. And another cloak. I like this cloak better. It looks nicer. So sue me. And leather armor to sell. Alright. Can we get into the quality clear? Hey, we can! 
Nice. All right, what have we got here? We got healing potion, a torch, leather helmet, and more boots. Okay. Leather helmet on there. Bolts of cloth can be sold. And a first aid kit. All right. Good. Got some stuff. Empire forts are legendary for their cleanliness, efficiency, and ritual attention to order. Why then is this workshop such a mess? It hasn't been used in months. Nobody's even bothered to clean up the cobwebs. I have a feeling that iron would pro is probably valuable. Excellent. Pick the pick the lock into the library. What have we got here? That's a map. We don't need that. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Bolt of fire scroll. Okay, that just goes outside. We don't really need to go out there now. Empire Liaison. Currently vacant. So I see. Candle, pen and ink. Accounts ledgers. I guess we can take a look at them. More accounts ledgers. More accounts ledgers. I doubt they have anything of note. This is an old ledger. It records a month's worth of goods shipments in and out of the valley, some years previous. It would likely be a struggle to find a single person who cares about this information now. Oop, wrong button. Yeah, I imagine so. Okay, here's, like, old barracks that aren't even, uh, aren't even occupied. Commander's office. Commander Terrence, acting officer. Ah, there we go. All right, then. Commander Terrence. You meet the commander of Fort Talrus. He looks like he was once a dashing, razor-sharp soldier of the sort the Empire prides itself on. What ground him down into the, into the weary bureaucrat you see before you, you can only guess at. He spends his time pacing around his office, trying to come up with a decent idea or two. He says in a weary voice, I'm Terence, commander of Fort Taurus. It is nice to get some help out here. What is your job? I run Fort Taurus, or I do as, or I do so as well as I can with what I am given. Sometimes I don't think the problems will ever cease. How fares Fort Taurus? For a moment, you see the flickers of fury in his eyes. His loss of composure only lasts a moment. Fort Taurus, proud defender of Skylark Vale, still stands. His voice drips with irony. What is happening in Skylark Vale? Just look outside. Look at the valley. See how well we protected it. The disaster started years ago. Yet despite my pleas, you're the first help we've received. At least I hope you are here to help. This all shows, I suppose, how little the Empire is concerned for its people here. Sounds like the Empire has been unjustly neglecting you. We have had a long, hard time of it out here. Things can only improve. Any small problems I can help out with? The commander sighs. <sighs> Normally I wouldn't bother you with this, but you seem inexperienced enough that you could probably use some practice. Like all forts, this one has some rats. Small ones, not a big deal, but lately we've had signs of some larger rats, the dangerous kind, infesting our fort. See if you can find any giant rats and dispose of them. Sure. Uh, I've come here to help you. You are the first help the Empire has deigned to send us in months. We have hardly gotten anything since the disaster hit. From the look of things, I'd strongly doubt you're sufficient for the task, but you are what we have been given. Why don't you think I'm capable? The disaster is of such a magnitude, I doubt a scrub such as yourself can handle it. However, you are help, and I won't waste you. I will assist you as best I can. What's a scrub? It means amateur or inexperienced soldier. Not a strong insult, but not terribly friendly, either. What assistance can you give me? Needless to say, we are granted few supplies. The Empire sends little to a peaceful area such as this one. He grows angrier as he speaks. 
However, anything in the main storeroom you'd like, you're welcome to. If you need a safe place to rest, return to your room. Finally, I know where you can get more information. Where can I get more information? Mayor Crouch in Sweetgrove to the north. She knows pretty much everyone in the Vale. Someone might have a clue to what caused the disaster. Go and talk to her. I can only hope so. Mayor Crouch. Up in Sweetgrove. Alright, we'll have to find our way there. Can I get any training here? When you have gained more experience, you can practice and improve your skills in any of the cities of the Vale. Of course. Thank you. Oh, wow. We could actually... It appears that the commander has trapped the entrance to his chambers. A small, flashing magical device has been placed in front of the door. Some magical traps can be disarmed. Some, like this one, can't. If you get close to it, something bad might happen. Yeah, we're just not going to go in there, then. You stare out through the gate at the land beyond. The plants beyond the Vale are healthy, the animals content. You can't help but be tempted by the chance to escape, to leave this place of death and never return. Do you wish to leave the scenario? No, I do not! Okay. Dining hall. That was the sound of a cat. There's apparently a cat around here somewhere. You make small talk with the guard for a while. You get the impression that being a guard out here is a difficult posting. It's dull, remote, and you have to watch people get sick without being able to do anything. After a bit of chat, you move on. It's nice to talk, but you don't learn anything useful. This woman looks like she's enjoyed a life of good health and ceaseless vigor. However, something is clearly chipping away at the edges of her vitality, and she isn't at all happy about it. I'm Maria. Welcome to my kitchen, honey. What can I do for you? What is your job? I cook for the troops and do what I can for the unfortunates who need help. I don't see many troops. There are still some soldiers here, though they feel pretty useless, poor lambs. What assails this valley, steel can't defeat. What is wrong with the valley? The look on her face is balanced evenly between pity and fear. No need to ask me, just go into Sweetgrove and look around. Oh, it'll break your heart. Why do these people need your help? Well, there are two types of crops in Skylark Vale, meager and dead. Though it's against the rules, those worst off sometimes come up here so I can feed them some of the Empire rations. Surely some crops can grow. Not really, not enough to sustain the people. Aren't you worried about disobeying the Empire? The Empire's supplies have saved many lives. Against its will. What can you tell me about Skylark Vale? The Vale has three towns in it. People from all of them have come to our, for our help. There's Sweetgrove, Blenlock, and Morales. Tell me about Sweetgrove. Just north of here, the largest town in the Vale. Mayor Crouch is there. I'm sure she'd like to see you. Tell me about Blinlock. It's a mining town to the northwest. Tell me about Morales. That's the worst case. It was a thriving farming village, well down river to the west. Now? Awful. It's just awful. Maria continues to work busily in her kitchen. Looks like she is starting to fall slightly ill, but she is trying to keep the sickness at bay through pure force of will. Can I get some supplies? Help yourself to anything in our stalls. I don't think you'll find much, though. I'm not well equipped. Well, there's some things here. I guess... Grab the steak. It's something. Greens and meat. Actually, yeah. Take the dried meat. Actually, yeah, that would actually be better than the steak. And again, steak is... It's steak! Why wouldn't we take steak? Alright, let's continue exploring through here. This is where the barracks are... are. Let's see. A lamp. Grab that. And boots. Oh, wait. You need boots. Now that I think about it, why bother with the can with the candles? I'm not even going to hold on to them. It's not worth it. And what have we got in here? Absolutely nothing. Unless there's something on the side of the walls? No. Alright. 
Well, here's the main area. There's the cat! Even if this cat could talk, it wouldn't. It's busy hunting rats. Ah, and that must be the way out. So... Penelope. This woman has clearly spent a lot of time out in the sun working with dirt. A trowel hangs from her belt. She is tending several patches of healthy crops. Probably the last healthy crops you'll see in a while. I'm Penelope. Greetings. Have you spoken to the commander yet? What are you doing? Well, I grow crops at the fort. Sort of an unusual arrangement. Is it normal practice to grow crops in an empire fort? She shrugs and picks dirt out from under her fingernails. Well, it's pretty unusual. I know, for an empire fort to have a living farmer. The curse has caused some arrangements to be made. What arrangements? This is one of the few areas around unaffected by the curse. Or at least not that affected. We grow some crops here to help out the unfortunates below. Penelope continues to make small talk with you, occasionally bending down to pick a weed. What should I talk to the commander about? Commander Terence will probably want to speak to you about the curse. Though what you really need to know, you can find out by drinking the river water. That was the first thing that went wrong. Tell me about Commander Terence. Oh, he's in the office in the southwest corner. It's a shame. He blames himself a lot for being unable to deal with the curse. It's really worn him down. What is the water like? It burns. Makes your tongue feel like it's been out in the sun for hours. That's why I grow crops up here. They get rainwater, not river water. When did the curse start? It all started five or six years ago. Terence will tell you more. Well, I talk... Penelope continues to make small talk with you, occasionally bending down to pick a weed. Well, I talked to the commander. Good. I hope you can help him. He, it has been hard here, and he hasn't deserved this kind of pressure. Of course. Thank you. Now... When you get close, you notice that there's a crack between the brick wall and the rock cliff. Looks like you could squeeze through it. Ah! You smell decaying meat and hear squeaking. Your keen adventurous senses are telling you that perhaps something unpleasant has taken up residence back here unnoticed by the soldiers. Rats. Oh dear. Shielded or weakened. Ow. Well, that's dead. Uh, little healing, please. Thank you. And there we go. That's the rat's dead. Nice fur. And an energy potion. So I just realized I gave that nice fur to you. Alright. Is there any other hidden spot back here? No, I don't think so. Alright. Let's uh, report in on that. Because why not? Just to open the door. Also, I just noticed there was another bar of iron there. We'll take it, but I want to make sure the doors are closed before I steal something. There we go. Alright, down in here. You did have a raft infestation, and I took care of it. Well, that's a tiny bit of good news. The last thing we needed was giant rats. He gives you a small pouch of coins. Use that to outfit yourself. I don't know what it will take to kill the Valley of the Curse, but better gear never hurts. Of course. Thank you. We'll definitely make use of that. And up this way is the way out. And... I think I'm going to end this episode here. No. Hold on, let me take a look at the map. Because it might be close. Oh, no, wait, you have the... You have the map. You have the map! Um... It might be close to get to, get to get to Sweet Grove. Let's let's just take the walk to Sweet Grove. Should be easy. For the first time, you look out over Skylark Vale. It's hard not to be shocked by what you see. Looks like the life itself has been slowly, painstakingly, and inexorably drained out of the land. The trees are withered, the grass is shot through with streaks of gray, and the smell of decay rises from the earth. To the north, you see a slow-flowing river wind through patches of, ten of fen and stands of stunted trees. 
No birds circle overhead, and no squirrels climb the trees. Something is wrong here. Terribly, terribly wrong. Welcome to Skylark Vale, a sweet grove 25 miles north. Warning, Skylark Vale is designated an unhealthy zone. Take precautions. Empire Order D-U-Z-D-L-34420. You meet a patrol- oh, You meet a small patrol of Empire soldiers. Their equipment is poor and they look slightly ill. However, they look alert and ready for a fight. Their commander greets you and speaks with you for a bit. You learn that some monsters have been attracted by the weakened state of the Vale. You should be careful while going north to Sweet Grove. Then, their warning delivered, they move on. This watchtower has been abandoned. Some cobalts have etched graffiti into its base with their claws. Goody. And it looks like there's something down there. Wonderful. Oh, and suddenly brigands. I didn't even see them. things, I guess. Too heavy! Yeah, if we can't really carry anything, we really need to get it to town to sell some of this crap we got. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything that- And suddenly more brigands. You know what? Fireball. Here we go, I guess that works. We'll kill other things later. Right now, uh, we did get some other things, so you wear that. Uh, you did grab a bow, we can give it to Sheik. Sure, you hold on to those arrows, and the rest of this stuff, I don't think there's anything we really need to hold on to. We'll, we've got a lot of stuff to sell, we need to get to the town. We'll kill that group over there in the next episode. Uh, not the next episode, after we get to town. In the next episode, because I'm gonna end it here. Next episode, we'll go to town and hopefully sell all this stuff we got. Till then, I'm Chessic44. Uh, that is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.